We are at the end of the January transfer window. We've got a massive game against Tottenham Hotspur to bring to you today. And as well as that, we've got no fewer than seven new arrivals coming into the club in today's episode of Chasing the Fortune. Hello, 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 guys. Welcome back to the channel. It is me, Taylor Made Gaming. What an episode we've got coming up today. We've got that massive game against Tottenham Hotspur. We've also got seven new arrivals, plus two more possibly coming in on the last days of the transfer window. And we've had a big name player renew his contract. We've had a big name player leave the club. So it has been very, very busy. And the reason it's been so busy is that at the start of the transfer window, I went and asked the board for more transfer money because we only had £1 million in the budget. And so I was expecting 5 6 £7 million maybe. What they actually came back with was £19 million which in this database, in the first season, is a trucking load of money. So I was very, very happy with that. And so, why don't we jump into those said transfers and check out who I've managed to bring into the club. And before we do that, I do just want to apologise for the lighting. I know it's not brilliant, but it's half ten at night as I record this. So, yeah, sorry guys, but... Into the transfers. Let's go. The first guy in the bag, in the van, for a price of £1.6 million is the championship manager legend, Tonton Muakoko Zola. And he's 18 years old at this point. He's got a dribbling of 16, technique of 16, work rate of 15, decisions of 16. So for an 18-year-old, he looks okay. Hopefully, we can give him game time. And in a year or two, maybe a little bit more than that, he might might be a first-team player. But when I saw the name, and I was like, you've got to buy him. It's a retro database. We've got to get him. Next up into the club is a bit of a luxury purchase for myself. We didn't really need another goalkeeper. I think we was pretty much solid with David James and Saka Hislop as our front two. But I loved Say Given when he was a player. He was one of my favourite goalkeepers in the Premier League. And, well, you can see why there from his attributes. 25 years old, so nowhere near his peak as a keeper yet. But he's got good handling, good one-on-ones, good reflexes. Decisions, concentration, composure, anticipation, everything is really, really good and only with room to grow. And so we brought him in for a price of 1.4 million. So we paid less for him than we did for Tonton Zola. Yeah, bargain. Absolute bargain deal. Next up, might have heard of this guy. Uh, Wayne Ronnie? Ronnie? Rooney? Is that how you say it? Yeah, it's Wayne Rooney at 16 years old. We've managed to get him in. Why Everton let him go? I just don't have a clue. But they have. And actually, his attributes, I don't know if they're that amazing. At least technically they're not. Maybe for someone who's going to go on and become like England's record goal scorer, you wouldn't really see it if you didn't know from those attributes. But we've got him in. We're going to try and develop him. He's got great determination, which should help. And he's got brilliant flair. So hopefully he could be fun to watch. He's already made one sub-appearance for us in the FA Cup. I'll tell you how that went in a second. And so we got him for a price of only £800,000. Absolute bargain deal. Really worth it for that, just to take the gamble on. 
Here is another football manager legend, championship manager legend, Kim Kallstrom. We've got him in the bag. He's 19 years old. This is a long, long time before he eventually made it to England with Arsenal and didn't really do a lot. But 19 years old and what a player. One of our best central midfielders, if not our best central midfielder. You can see his attributes there. And you are not going to believe the price I got him for when I tell you it in a second. But yeah, 17 first touch, 17 passing, work rate of 19, vision of 18. Just, just phenomenal. Just exactly what you would want. And now, do you want to hear the price? We paid £100,000. Absolutely nothing. We managed to sign him on a pre-contract deal. And then we got the, the opportunity to buy him early. And his Swedish team only wanted 100k. So I could not press that button fast enough. And I'm really, really looking forward to see how he gets on in a claret and blue shirt. He's not made his debut yet because he's joined us with a little bit of a knock. He might be back in 12 days or four weeks. But I think it's worth waiting the four weeks to get him into the team if we can get him for that 100k so yeah brilliant deal that one of my best deals i think i've done in a long time on fm okay then next up is another guy from newcastle united it is the peruvian legend nalberto solano this started off as a bit of a luxury buy again because back around this time i was a massive fan of nalberto solano and you would not believe how excited I was when Solano joined West Ham in real life. But then it turned out he couldn't run anymore. He couldn't really play football anymore. And he wasn't really that good for us in real life. But hopefully, here, now we've got him six, seven years earlier. And at the age of 27, he should be able to do a job for us. And just look at those attributes that he's got. Brilliant crossing. Great first touch. Great free kicks. Passing off the ball just everything is really good maybe his work rate is a little low but hopefully we're not gonna need to use him too much for that and so you can see we paid three and a half million pounds again the prices in the first season on this database are just insane and he has already played three games for us and got a goal already so he's had a brilliant, brilliant start to life here at Upton Park. If you're playing a retro database on Football Manager, I don't know how, if you're playing in the Premier League, you can go without buying Georgie King Kladsey. I loved watching him play in the late 90s and the early 2000s. Loved him when he was at Man City. Really liked him when he was at Derby. And so, again, another bit of a luxury purchase, maybe. But, yeah, very, very happy with getting him in. Great dribbling, great crossing, great passing, great technique. And we got him in for 400k. And just like Solano, he's played three games, got a goal, but he's also got an assist. So, really, really happy with getting him in. The last of the confirmed transfer deals so far has seen us get muzzy is it in from leicester city another one who i really liked watching because leicester they had a decent team around the late 90s and the early 2000s i seem to remember them getting the two league cup finals in a row and i think they won one and lost one well they might have won both i can't remember let me know down below if you know how they got on in those league cup finals but yep yeah, Brilliant little play at this. Great dribbling, great passing technique, work great, teamwork off the ball. Just everything you would want in a West Ham player. And he's 27 years old, so just getting into his peak now. And you can see that again, we got him stupidly cheap. £165,000. 
just redonkulous price that. So very, very happy to get him in for that. And now, very quickly, on to the outs. Nigel Winterburn has left the club at the age of 38 years old. He has got great mentals, but his acceleration and his pace just aren't good enough for someone in the Premier League. So we decided to let him go, and well, we only got 9,000 for him. So yeah, we've done some great incoming transfer deals with the low prices, but we've also been stung a bit on that one. But oh well, the only other major transfer deal I want to talk about is this one. Trevor Sinclair has left us to go and join Man United. He had his head turned at first by a bid from, no joke, Barcelona. Barcelona wanted him. They only wanted to pay like a million pounds. And I was trying for five million. Then I went down to two and a half and they still weren't having it. So, yep, yeah, Trevor Sinclair, I'm gutted we lost him because he did very, very well for us. Nine goals and six assists in 18 games of football. And we only get 1.6 million for him. But he wasn't happy and he wanted to go. And so if we go back to the outgoing transfers, you will notice one guy's name isn't there who was looking for a move at the, at the end of December. That guy's name is Paolo Di Canio. And that is because he has signed a brand new contract. He came to me. Well, actually, I went to him at the beginning of January again, and I tried offering him a contract. And at first, it was when we didn't have the increased budget, so I couldn't offer him what he wanted. But I went and asked the board to deal with it. And well, they did. So we have still got De Canio for another two years of football. Very, very happy with that. And now, let's go, let's go and have a quick look at the schedule, and then we'll get into today's game. And so, you was last with me for... When was you last with me? It was for Arsenal, wasn't it? So, you saw us lose 2-0 to Arsenal. Very disappointing performance, that. But then, we got a 4-2 win against Liverpool. Fantastic result. And then, Bolton 1-0, we beat them. And then, we lost to Ipswich in the League Cup quarter-final in the 93rd minute. Gutted is not the word. I thought our name was on that trophy. And then after that, we lost 2-0 to Sunderland. 4-3, we got revenge on Ipswich in the Premier League in a bonkers game of football. We only won it in the 89th minute. So a lot of late drama between us two. And then Southampton, we beat them 1-0 with what turned out to be Trevor Sinclair's last goal for us. And then Ipswich again. We played them three times, this time losing to them in the FA Cup. So all we've got left is the league to concentrate on. And now we've played Leicester 4-2. Paolo Di Canio getting a hat-trick. Solano getting his first goal for the club in that game of football. Muzzy is it played in that game for us against Leicester. And there was a little bit of confusion at the beginning because is it thought he had scored, but it got ruled out. So that was a little bit gutting. But then speaking of players scoring against their old team, Georgie Kinkladzi opened the scoring in his debut for us against Derby, but we could only get a 1-1 win. And, well, the last game, Man United. We lost to Man United again, but we gave that a good go. We did give that a very, very good go. And so I'm a little bit disappointed we couldn't at least get a point. But that all brings us to today's game, and it's against Tottenham Hotspur. We are in fifth. Tottenham are in seventh. So, it could be a good game of football, this. I'm looking forward to it. I'll be back with you guys in a minute when we've got the team all sorted out. Here's the team for today's game. 
We've got Shea Given in goal. Scott Minto, Daly, Pierce, and Song make up our back four. Muzzy is it. Michael Carrick and John Monker make up our midfield. And then up top, it's Georgie Kincladze on the left, Norberto Solano on the right, and Paolo Di Canio up front. And you might just spot a new name on the bench, Maurizio Pochettino. He's just joined us in between the last part of the video and today's game. He's joined us for a price of £1.5 million. And yet, really looking forward to getting him into the team. Think he might make his next start or his first start in our next game. And so, yep, yeah, very happy with that deal. We missed out on our other target, which was, of course, Leo Messi. He's gone to Valencia under 19s instead. So, yeah, a little bit disappointed with that. But let's go and get into this game against Tottenham Hotspur. OK, and we're a little bit confused by these team talks. We're higher than these in the league. So, why can't I say anything that reflects that? I'm going to have to go. We've got nothing to lose here. Again, no reaction. As I was expecting. And, uh, well, that's not a brilliant start, is it, people? That is not a brilliant start. But let's get into the game. Come on, you irons. Four minutes into the game. It's Tottenham throwing the ball back to us. Very nice of them. And now it's Michael Carrick with the ball. He goes forward to Paolo Di Canio. Di Canio out wide. Can he get this into the box? No, he can't. It takes a deflection back to Sikno Anderton. And the ball goes away. But we pick it up with John Moncur. Scott Minto down the left. Can he find King Kladzi? Yes, he can. Very nice ball. We're into the box. It's a penalty. It's an early penalty at White Hart Lane. And surely that's going to be given. Even with the 20 years too early VAR. Cannot see that being overturned. As indeed it hasn't. And it's going to be the Canio to take the penalty. Come on, Paolo. Come on, you mad, mad Italian. For the perfect start to the game. He runs up. And of course he scores. Paolo Di Canio. Paolo Di Canio. Half an hour later, we've finally got another highlight. Carrick with the ball goes over the top. Kinkladji's in the box again. His cross has been blocked by Scott Minto. Who goes to Muzzy, is it? Who's in the box. They really don't want to touch him, do they? Muzzy, is it? Shot is blocked. And, well, it's 2-0. Or is it? I think that's going to be disallowed. I think that's going to be given offside. It was all a little bit ping-pongy back in the box, wasn't it? And so, yeah, maybe not unsurprising that that was offside. Are they going to let us have a look at it so we can make our own minds up? No, they're not. That's a little bit dodgy, if you ask me. Oh, just before half-time, Spurs have got a corner ball and their header from Stefan Everton thankfully goes over just to avoid any pre-half-time nerves. You know what? Muzzy, is it? Minto. Minto with it. Into Kinkladzi. Kinkladzi plays it over the top to Canio. I think that's offside. I think that's another offside goal. I'm not going to get excited about that one. It was a very nice finish, a very De Canio-esque type finish, but it was definitely offside. And so that is the half-time whistle, and we have dominated that first half. Nine shots to our 12, four on target to our seven, and look at that XG, 2.06, wowzers. So we should have had another goal, at least. And so I'm going to go pump on fists. Uh, nope. Hands on hips. Nope. Outstretched arms. That's what I'm going to go. I'm delighted. And everybody's happy. Come on. Only 45 minutes left to hold on. With 20 minutes left to go in the game, we've not had any highlights in this second half. So I'm just going to try and change things up. See if I can change that. Uh, let's get Canuti on for Solano. And any others? Uh, you know what? I'm gonna chuck. I'm gonna chuck Defoe on for Decanio. I think Decanio's had a great game, but I think Defoe might be able to nick that second goal for us. Ten minutes left in the game. It's Neil Sullivan with 
the goal kick. He goes short for Spurs. Perry goes long. And all they flicked it on is Sergei Revrov. And Anderton's in past our defence like he's a doctor. And Darren Anderton's equalised. Sick no Anderton. Finds his way onto a pitch and does what he should have been doing a lot more in his career. And that is scoring goals. Maybe I shouldn't have taken De Canio off. Maybe I shouldn't have as well. It was just all a bit bad from the, from the defence, from say given, from everyone there. And that is how the game ends. One goal apiece. How we haven't won that game of football, I really, really don't know. An XG of 2.67 to their 1.6. 19 shots to their 14. That was a big chance to try and gain an advantage in the race for the Champions League, but was not to be. Uh, I'm going to say, well done, lads. You've done well to avoid defeat. We should have been favourites going in, seeing as we're higher in the league, but oh well. So that leaves us fifth in the table, five points now behind Chelsea in fourth. Champions League starting to look a little bit unlikely, but you never know. If we can go on a run, we might be able to do it. And so let's see, when are we going to come back? I think we come back. And there's not really any games in February that excite me. You know what? I promised you Chelsea last time, but that game got moved because of Chelsea advancing in other competitions. So we're going to come back for that one at the beginning of March at home to Chelsea. And so, guys, if you've enjoyed this video, please pop a massive thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel for more Football Manager 21 content, Total Extreme Wrestling content, uh, Bus Simulator content, all a lot of good stuff on the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Follow me on Twitter at TaylorMadeGaming, and I shall see you next time.